It looks like a concert, and the lights blind my eyes. You sing too many new songs, bro. The music is too loud. It hurts my ears. How dare you wear ripped jeans in God's house and a baseball cap? How do we handle criticism as a worship leader? Recently, I had two academy students share that they've received some negative feedback from their congregants. One of them had received quite a lot of negative feedback and seemed to ignore all of it. She said, as long as you're listening to God and doing what he tells you, you don't have to listen to anyone else. I disagree with that statement, and I'll tell you why. Leadership is about taking people from point A to a more desirable destination. But in order to get them there, you have to keep them along the way. If you lose the people you're leading, you'll never get them to the promised land. Leadership is about meeting people where they're at and taking them somewhere better one baby step at a time. So instead of ignoring feedback and criticism or being super discouraged by it, let me suggest a better approach. Here are five ways to handle criticism as a worship leader. Don't get bitter get better. This is about your attitude, how you're receiving the feedback. Don't view it as an enemy, view it as a friend. Feedback is a chance for you to level up. It's a chance for you to grow. Feedback is simply more data to put into your decision-making model. It will make you stronger. It will give you a wider perspective. It will give you a view on things that maybe you never considered before. It's not hurting you, it's helping you. Kiss that feedback, it's there to help you. Scripture says a wise man takes advice. So if you wanna be a better leader, don't avoid feedback, actually invite feedback. Don't take it personally, don't view it as an attack, it's actually a chance for you to level up. Don't get bitter, get better. Number two, eat the seed, spit out the husk. Don't be like one of those weird people who choose sunflower seeds whole, actually I used to do that, leave a comment if you did too, but there is a kernel of truth in every hard shell. Even if someone delivered it with unkind words, there's usually a kernel of truth buried deep inside. So rip open the hard shell and ask God to show you what's that nutritious little kernel inside that will help you grow, improve, and get better. To get to the gold, you gotta dig through the dirt. Remember that, the gold is buried inside the dirt. Next, pay attention to patterns. If multiple people share the same thing and you're hearing it from different sources or you're hearing it over an extended period of time, pay attention. You might be bumping into a blind spot. And by definition, a blind spot means that you can't see your own problem. You need other people's voices to tell you that you have a problem. So don't be defensive. If you're seeing a pattern, there's probably a problem. You might not like it, but it might be true. If I hear a comment from just one person, I usually ignore it. Everybody's got their preferences. But if I hear something from multiple people over multiple weeks, I really need to say, Alex, you might have a blind spot here. I recently had a friend come and guest lead worship at our church, and I forgot to tell her about our dress code because it's a little bit higher standard than my previous church, and she came with ripped jeans. I got so many emails from people saying, I can't believe you let someone on the stage with holes in their jeans. We're not that kind of holy. Now, in my mind, were they overreacting? Yes, they were. But since I heard it from 10 people, I said, you know what, Alex? You did make a mistake. You forgot to tell this girl about the higher standard of dress code. It was my bad, and I needed outside input to show me where I made a mistake. I didn't get bitter. I got better. Next time, I'm going to make sure to let my guests know, hey, this is our dress code standard. And even if I think it's a little too legalistic, and by the way, I did try to shepherd those people through email about their attitude and reaction, even still, I need to adapt to my current church's culture. Remember, leadership is meeting people where they're at and leading them one baby step at a time. And that leads to my fourth point, which is to seek to please God, but adapt to lead people. Paul said, I've become all things to all people. So Paul adapted his approach to reach the people he was trying to reach. And Jesus said that Moses allowed laws about divorce as a concession for the people's hardness of hearts. It wasn't the ideal, but he made a concession for them. And as leaders, we need to listen to those we lead and be patient with them. My favorite verse, Paul says, be patient with them all. And so, yes, you want to seek to please God above all else, but you need to listen to the people that you're leading and adapt to help them go on the journey to the promised land, which means we need to be humble. When you receive criticism, be open to changing. You might be the one who does need to change. Don't just have a hard shell and be like, everyone else is wrong, I'm right, they don't know what they're talking about. No, listen, truly listen to what they're saying and try to find the heart underneath the harsh words. Proverbs 19.20 says, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you'll be counted among the wise. So listen, don't be discouraged by that feedback. It's your friend, invite it. Be grateful for the feedback and don't get bitter, get better. 
If you're looking for support when you're feeling beat down and discouraged, join our free portion of our academy where we have over a thousand worship leaders from all over the world encouraging one another, sharing their struggles, sharing advice with one another. It's completely free and you can get access by clicking the link below or by visiting worshipministrytraining.com slash free. If you're serious about growing in your worship leading and you want all of our 10 in-depth courses, our live monthly trainings, our group classes, our personalized coaching, and done-for-you admin systems and discipleship material, you can try the Worship Ministry Training Academy for just $1 by clicking the link below. But either way, click one of those links below to find the encouragement and support that you need in the midst of a difficult ministry job. I look forward to seeing you inside the Academy or in the next video. God bless.